Hello, this is Big G Bailey, and welcome to the finale of Let's Play Star Trek 2, Zoda's Revenge. Last time, when I was in this room here, I thought I had to take a whole bunch of damage to get the items in the middle there. But, as one of you pointed out to me, haha, -ha, yeah, you can just jump diagonally like that in order to get in here. I didn't know about that, because I thought all the tiles on the outer ring there were spiked there. I didn't notice those two tiles there before, so yeah, thanks for letting me know. But now, let's get back to where we left off here to finally confront Zoda Z himself. For final boss time! Now, in the first phase here, we've got all these Zoda spawnlings around here. One of them is real. The others are not. You can't damage them. They'll just sit there and block your shots. So, what I like to do is try to get in as close proximity to the real one as possible. And that way, the others won't be able to block me, but I might take some more damage if I do that. So it is a little risky there. But now, the rest of them unite to form Phase 2 of Zoda Z. And you saw that first shot, he... yeah, that one. Uh, that one will turn you into a boar. You won't be able to attack Zoda at all. All you can do is move around and dodge and wait for it to wear off eventually. I like how they incorporate that into the gameplay mechanics, though. It's not just a storyline thing for the villagers for some reason. Well, now, when he does shoot that at you, I like to jump vertically or horizontally, because if I jump diagonally back at him, I'll jump over the first one in the middle there and then hit the one in the back. And the reason why I'm shooting him diagonally a lot more than horizontally is because if you shoot horizontally with all these projectiles on the screen there, you'll hit the sprite limit, and some of your shots won't even go through at all. You won't hit them. So don't do that. Just go diagonally, and you'll be good. Okay, we got him pinned in the corner there. Come on. Yes! Gotcha! All right. Phase two down. Now it's time for phase three. For real final boss time. Now this one starts out with the same attacks as before, but he does have a lot of more tricks here. So, whoa, get away from me, man. Get away from me. Whoa, he's got lightning grenades. Holy cow. Let's see what we can do with that, though. Okay, got, oh, got him in the corner there. Now I gotta move over. Yeah, I got those fire pillars there too, but those ones aren't too bad to deal with because they only move horizontally. So, the rest of them... Whoa! Ow! Okay, I'm gonna have to use some potions. That's fine. We'll use uh, a couple of them there while we're at it. You gotta keep your health above 10 hearts. So that way... Uh, once you can keep using the Ultra Psychic Shockwave. That's the way to go. The rate of fire is just obscenely good against them. But, uh... Okay, now this one, he's gonna be invulnerable while he's spinning around like that. So either he'll stop on his own eventually, or you can just take the hit, uh, or take intentional damage, and that'll break him out of it instantly, too. But uh, I would rather not take intentional damage, especially at this point. Ha-ha! Gotcha! Soda down! But all right, not bad, not bad. I think that's a little harder than he was in the first game just because of all the diagonal movement and so many more projectiles to avoid. Wow, you've beaten this game now. I can't believe it. Now well, let's see what's back here. Oh, hey. How's it going? Aww. Yeah, what's going on here? Oh, well, they got all turned to boars, but on the bright side, we have bacon now. I definitely smell a pork product of some kind. Or we could just follow after her. Why not? Yeah, happy music. What do you mean? I didn't save you. You were doing just fine there. Oh, yeah, so I did. Sure, I could have stayed in the past. I could have even been king. But in my own way, I am king. 
Oh, <laughs> you don't remember from the first game? Come on. What do you mean? <laughs> nice little sound effect there. But, uh, all right. Too bad we can't go to the observatory or laboratory or whatever that place was. That's okay, though. But, uh, hey, hey, all right. Oh. Well, I prefer my meat well done. I, I don't know. Call me crazy, but I'd rather not die from what I'm trying to eat. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, well, there you are. I suppose it's better than being turned into a wooden figurine. <laughs> But, uh, no, nah, no, nah, that's another game, viewers. So what was Zoda gonna do anyway? Just turn everyone into boars? Or something? Seems like a pretty mild punishment there for defying him or something. Oh, okay. Uh, well, yeah, she said she'd meet us at the hut there. I was about to say, hey, wait a minute. Where did she go? Oh, yeah, I remember you, but I think Miss Mira looked better. I think I remember, like, in the first game with her in Chapter 3 there or something, uh, if you don't say that she looks prettier than Miss Coral or something, you can't progress with the plot. You have to actually tell her that or something. It's like a sequence trigger. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I suppose I kind of zapped them or something. Why I can't use my psychic powers as a boar when, you know, a horse and a monkey could do that, I don't know. And an owl, I guess. But, uh, all right. So what do we got going on here? Uh, dudes? Oh, do they just all say thank you or something? But, okay. All right, let me see. Uh, I forget which one actually advances the plot here. Um, okay, we can talk to you first. So I have. Well, you already were, but I suppose now you're even more indebted to me. But all right. Oh, uh, you're not going to do that? Okay, I guess uh, we can talk to the chief for a little bit. Eh, how's it going? Oh, it is? Okay. So, how are you going to do that? What do you mean, put them together? You want to make, like, four lines or something? I don't know. But this is happening automatically, viewers. I'm not doing anything here. Seems like you're just putting them together randomly. I don't know, but... Maybe they got little slots in them on the side or something. Uh, you're not doing a very good job of making a Tetris, dude. You gotta get four lines. Oh, well, at least it looks symmetrical now. What? Whoa! What the? What's going on? Oh, uh, hey, all right. I would say that kind of came out of nowhere, but... They did have that ability with the magic cubes in the first game, so I guess that works. Hooray! You saved yourself at the cost of your entire civilization. Or most of your entire civilization. Congrats! Oh, yeah, well, that's what, uh, that's what the others did, yeah. But all right. Oh, what about Zoda? I mean, it's just him. What about, you know, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, sure, why not? Think about me twice if you like. Oh, uh, y you're welcome. Could I get a reward? Where are you gonna go? Oh, you just teleporting and that's it? Well then. 
Yeah, nice little animation there with the cutscene. That is one thing I really like about this game, so let's take a look back at our adventure and review the game. For the graphics, I'd give them an 8 out of 10. I think they're certainly above average for an NES game, although it's pretty late in the life cycle of the console, so yeah, you would expect them to be better than the early games there, but like with the cutscenes and the eight-way movement now that the first game didn't have and everything made it quite a bit more complex and much more difficult, which is probably one of the reasons why I was not as fond of this game at the time I was doing the LP of the first one. For the music, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. Nice, uh, uh, what is it? Yeah, just happy music and, uh, what is it? Catchy tunes, just like any Zelda game or anything like that. Some, some get you pretty pumped up and everything. So, yeah, I'd consider it comparable to the Zelda games of the era. Nothing too extraordinary, but still good enough. Let's see, for the plot, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Pretty, uh, standard fare for an NES game. Not a whole lot going on, but, well, more than, I suppose, an average NES game would have had there and everything. Villain involvement and stuff. You didn't see a whole lot of that back then. And for the gameplay mechanics, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. I like how they give you more than one of the different weapon types, the regular ones you have all the time, but they still made them pretty useful overall. Even the sub-weapons were all, well, almost all of them were pretty useful there. They did that in both of the games, and I really like how they handled that beyond just one enemy being weak to one or not another. So overall, I'd give this game an 8 out of 10. Definitely a above average action platformer game. And, well, that's the end of the series. They, uh, yeah, I guess they just decided not to keep on doing any more with this for some reason. So I hope you've enjoyed Let's Play Star Tropics 2 Zoda's Revenge. It was a lot more fun making it than I thought it would be. And, well, now I'll get ready to get my next project going. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off, and see you next Let's Play!